Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we need to take a look at Center Scorch, and I know we've had a look at Center Scorch before. I am well aware that this will not be the first time we've ever had a look at Center Scorch. But you see, the way we play Center Scorch, and how we can actually set up and get this rolling nicely, is actually changing a little bit. Or at least according to some players over in Japan it is. And this this seems like the kind of thing we probably need to be having just a little bit of a look at. So let's have a look, shall we? Now obviously, the deck is still built around Center Scorch VMAX. That has not changed. Nor do I expect it to change at any point in the near or that distant future. Because it's a Center Scorch deck. We're going to be playing Center Scorch. And Center Scorch is still a very good, very powerful Pokemon, same as it ever was. G-Max Centerferno for two colorless energy does 40 damage base, plus 40 more for each energy attached to it. And if you do happen to deal any damage with the attack, you get to attach a fire energy from your discard pile. So clearly what we're doing here is just trying to build up a gigantic Center Scorch. And the goal here is, let's get a ridiculous amount of energy on. And, oh, oh, 340 HP Eternatus VMAX. Yeah, we're getting a one-hit KO. Pile energy on and smash. There's still the same awkwardness we have to watch from before. There is always a balance that needs to be made. If you put all of your energy onto one Center Scorch and it gets KO'd, you might not be able to get enough energy onto a second to try and win the game. But that's up to you judging your opponent's board, etc. So I'm going to leave that one up to you on a game-by-game -game basis. Now, we do also have Center Scorch V. Center Scorch V is and remains honestly not that relevant. One energy, 20 damage. You may discard an energy from both active Pokemon, though you don't have to. And four energy, 180. What I will say is, the second attack of Center Scorch V is actually really good for taking out Zamazenta. Because, of course, Zamazenta has that lovely ability that makes it immune to damage from V maxes. So you've got to use Center Scorch V to take it out. And although you're not going to be getting a huge amount of stuff with this 184 energy, and it is frankly overpriced, we know, spoiler alert, we're going to be playing Welder. So actually getting the energy on in two turns is eminently doable, and you'll get a one-hit KO on Zamazenta, which is something you're probably going to need to be doing here and there. So go team! Now... One of the other, because we're only playing four Pokemon here and two of them are Center Scorch. One of them we probably shouldn't be terribly surprised by. You probably knew it before I tell you. It's Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds. Of course it is Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds. For one fire energy, you search your deck for one fire energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon. But if you go second and it's your first turn of the game, you get to search your deck for free fire energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. That is phenomenal. When you go second. And that has always been the problem with Volcanion. What do you do if you go first? You're not going to want to use Flare Starter going first on turn two. Hopefully, by the time you get to turn two, you've played a welder, you've got three or four energy on a Center Scorch VMAX, because you've had a turn, you can now evolve it, and then you're off and rolling. I adore Volcanion. I play Center Scorch only online, not in real tournaments, come on. But I quite like playing Center Scorch, and it's a fun little deck, and it's not even that little, to be fair. And I like using Flare Starter. When I go second, I am all over that turn one Flare Starter. But when I go first, I don't like it. Remember, if you attach one energy to Volcanion and then you use that to attach one energy to a bench Pokemon, you might as well have just attached to the bench Pokemon. Not loving it. Though I will say Volcanion absolutely still has a role with High Heat Blast. Two energy, 50 damage, meh. But if there are two other energy in play, do not have to be on Volcanion. Honestly, it's better if they're not because you don't need them. You do 110. This is a great non-GX attacker, and as soon as you've got two energy somewhere on the field, Welder onto Volcanium, boom, off you go. What is different about this build then? What makes this build different and in my eyes better? Snorlax. 
I have been singing the praises of the new Snorlax from Vivid Voltage ever since it was revealed. And I told you that I expected it to start shaking up the game. And I really honestly think it makes Centre Scorch quite a bit better. I've been playing a lot of all the meta games lately preparing for commentating the Players' Cup. Yeah, that's right. That's official now. And I am beyond excited. But that has put me into full let's play every metagame deck over and over again to really try and learn the matchups mode. Be rude if I didn't. And I would put this in my Centre Scorch deck in a heartbeat. The ability Gormandize, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may draw until you have seven cards in your hand. If you use this ability, your turn ends. But if you go first, guess what? You, you, you don't have an attack. You can't use a supporter. So Gorman dies away. And of course, if you go first and Gorman dies, you will significantly increase the chances of having that Welder and two Fire Energy next turn in order to really get going. This is how I see Snorlax. The fact of the matter is, if I go second, yes, obviously I'm using Flare Starter. That shouldn't be controversial. Because I'm not getting four energy onto the field and I'm not getting Center Scorch V Max out. So Flare Starter is definitely the right choice. But I'm not always going to go second. And honestly, if I'm playing against Center Scorch, and I know this, I'm not going to let them go second. Unless I really want to go first. Because it gives them an advantage. But now you go first, you play Snorlax, and there's four of these. So this list I'm showing you today plays nine basic Pokemon, four of them are Snorlax. You should, in just under half of your games, or about half of your games, you should start Snorlax. Which is pretty gosh darn cool. And it just gives you what you need to get rolling. Now, to be fair, 4 energy, body slam, 100 damage, paralysis on a coin flip. Because you're playing well, you can use this. But make no mistake about it, this is played. So the Center Scorch player basically goes, oh, I'm going second. Sweet. Turn one flare starter. Or, oh, I'm going first. Sweet. I'll use Snorlax to make sure I've got a good turn too. It tries to play those two Pokemon to guarantee your good start. And I love it. And that's it for the Pokemon line. Three free Center Scorch, two Volcanion, four Snorlax, boom, that is it. In terms of the energy, obviously we're playing a bunch of fire energy. We kind of have to, it's kind of important, welder and all of that stuff. But we're also playing four copies of Heat Fire Energy. Because as much as I love this deck for the Snorlax, and I do, I also love this deck because it actually goes aggressively into making sure you're not getting KO'd. So we play four Heat Fire Energy to make sure that we've got that extra HP. Each one gives you an extra 20 HP. And if we move into the trainers, we can see there's more of this. There are two copies of Hyper Potion. Why are there two copies of Hyper Potion? Well, you've got to discard two energy from the Pokemon, but then you get to heal 120. But you can replace those two energy with Welder. And the fact of the matter is, right, as much as Center Scorch can build up to these ridiculous attacks, you don't have to. Like, free energy on Center Scorch is still doing 160. And bearing in mind, when you attack, you are then attaching from the discard pile. So go for it. Hyper Potion, I don't see it played in Center Scorch decks much. I really do think it makes Center Scorch better. We have three copies of Mallow and Lana here. That's the switch that also lets you heal 120. So you've got the full four heat fire energy, and you've got two copies of Hyper Potion, and then you've got three copies of Mallow and Lana, and not for nothing, a copy of Cynthia and Caitlyn lets you draw three cards, but also recover a supporter from your discard pile. Yes! And the theory here basically is, and obviously you're playing four welder, right? I should, I've kind of already told you that, but you're playing four welder blatantly. There are going to be a lot of turns where you need welder to attach energy. That should be a given. But on turns where you don't have to use welder, you should have a Mallow and Lana in hand and be ready to go. Which is brilliant. We then play one copy of Big Charm here. Gives you an extra 30 HP. This is a build, remember, with lots of healing. And Center Scorch V Max has got 320 HP. And then you play the Heat Fire Energy and the Big Charm. I know I said if you put all your energy on a Center Scorch and get KO'd, you'll lose. And that's still true, incidentally. But 
this is trying to build up a center scorch that ain't getting KO'd. And then healing lots, and that's awesome. Now, one thing you might be thinking here is, well, hang on a second, we'll see. That's an awful lot of supporters that, that aren't boss's orders. How are you using boss's orders to gust? And the answer is we're not. We are playing a copy of Great Catcher, which discards two cards from your hand and then brings up an EX or a GX. Nowadays, GX, because EXs are all rotated. And we're planning three copies of Pokemon Catcher. Flip a coin if heads casting. Yes, there are definitely going to be games where you just flip tails on all your Pokemon Catcher, and that's sad. But even on those games, you're still going to have giant attacks and a bunch of healing. And this is what all goes together to make this a different list. You've got Snorlax to basically guarantee the fast start, and then you've got item gusting and healing and increasing HP to try and make sure that you are proper job tanking. And I adore this deck. I think it's brilliant. I much prefer this to other Center Scorch decks I've seen. You do have to wait until Snorlax is legal, because it's, it's not currently. But after that, you're good to go. Now, I know that the lazy thing a lot of people say nowadays is, oh, Japan's in a different format. And you're right, they are. They've, they've got Heat Factory, Prism Star. They do. They have a single copy of Heat Factory Prism Star. That is the single card in this deck that we don't have that Japan still does. You know what? I think we're going to cope. To quickly run through the other cards, we've got Quick Ball. Four copies. Gets our basics, obviously. Couple copies of Evolution Incense. Gets our Evolutions, which is Center Scorch VMAX. Four copies of Switch. Bearing in mind, it is really important to get Snorlax or Volcanion or Center Scorch in and out the active as necessary. We want Snorlax going first, Volcanion going second, and Center Scorch attacking immediately. So Switch becomes very important. We've got a couple copies of Reset Stamp to try and slow down your opponent. Make them shuffle the hand into their deck and draw a number of cards equal to their remaining prizes. Which is good if they take a big lead. We've obviously got Giant Half as our main stadium here. Discards a card from your hand and then searches your deck for two fire energy. And then you try and attach them with Welder. And then we actually play a couple copies of Tag Call here, despite not playing any tag team Pokemon. Because we've got Mallow and Lana and Cynthia and Caitlyn. And they can be searched out here quite nicely. There is also a copy of Guzma and Halla here. Let's you search out a stadium, a special energy and a Pokemon tool. So, you basically go for, well, Heat Fire Energy, Big Charm, and then either Giant Half or Heat Factory Prism Star, depending on whether you need to search energy or draw cards. That will depend on the game state. And then just a couple copies of Marnie. Both players shuffle a hand into the deck. You get five cards, your opponent gets four. You don't really ever want to play Marnie unless your opponent's in a big lead or has a giant good hand. Most of the time, it's going to be Welder or Mallow and Lana. But they're there if you need them. I stand by this deck list as a very different way. And I honestly believe a better way to play Center Scorch. I don't always cover the meta decks when they are full on meta decks. We cover them all as they come out. But when Center Scorch has been around for a few months, we don't usually cover it over and over again. There's no need to. We've said what we need to say. The fact of the matter is, this is a better way to play Center Scorch. And I am hyped. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing is always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.